This is One on One. Mark Jones is President and Chief Executive Officer of State Theater in New Jersey, New Brunswick, New Jersey. You guys are happening down there, huh? Well, we're building a program. And uh, for the last three years that I've been there, uh, we've <clears throat> added a great many programs. We had a 24% audience growth in fiscal 12, uh, which is pretty unprecedented in a bad economy. Right. And uh, the year that just ended, we were up about 10%. And uh, so we're on a track to be up to about a 15, 16 million dollar budget in the next four years. You know, it's so interesting, you guys are the number one attended arts theater? Last year we were, according to Polestar. Yeah. Uh, Prudential Center, you know, the theater uh, that NJPAC has, the biggest theater, has more seats. Uh, but last year we uh, outranked them. We were 24th in the world and 22nd mm -hmm. in the United States. You know, it's interesting, as we were talking about um, big stars, and I just said to you, ironically, that uh, my son, uh, who's turning 21 as we do this program, said, I want to go see Tony Braxton at the State Theater. And you just had Jackson Brown, mm -hmm. right? You have big names. And I always think to myself, how does the theater in the heart of New Brunswick, how do you have such big names? And how do you manage the whole question of cost of those tickets? The whole question of, I mean, you could blow the place out, because you said Jackson Brown was sold out big, right? Mm -hmm. How do you figure out the price point? Well, we take a look at the artist fee and we negotiate it carefully. We, we like to keep some affordable ticket prices. That is to say, you know, we could price the lowest ticket at $100. It's in, it's in our court to do that. But we try to keep, uh, keep it affordable. We are a publicly, public charity and publicly supported as an art center. So You're we a non-profit. A not-for-profit. Non uh, and publicly supported, that's important. We get a lot of money from the New Jersey State Council and other public agencies. State Council on the Arts. State Council. And uh, we uh, try to mix it up. We have to support our symphonies and dance companies and international operas and ballets that we show in HD, which are, uh, l lose a bit of money. We have huge education programs throughout the state and we bring 30,000 children from 159 school districts to the state theater each year. Uh, so those need subsidy, but we find a way somehow with our fundraising of about two and a half million a year to make it all work. But hold on, what are, you, are you implying, it's interesting, when you have a really big act that you know is gonna sell out, are you tempted sometimes to say, hey, we really can use this act to make up for all the money we're losing with all these programs and arts education that we really want to do for the community, but clearly you're not making money doing that. Well, you know, if it's a, I, I don't want to use the word gouge. We don't do not that. Gouge. What we do is we, we charge a fair price. If you want premium seats to see a major artist, we're going to charge 150 bucks. This is a dilemma that all of the performing arts centers in New Jersey face, whether it's NJPAC or Mayo Center or Count Basie or Bergen Pack. <clears throat> we all try to find some room where we can have a variety of prices uh, that allow everybody who really wants to come to get there. So uh, when you have Tony Braxton and Hopefully you bring some of your team there. Your we are. Son I, will. Once our producers found out Tony Braxton was going to be uh, there, you'll find they're all excited. If, <clears throat> but if they want the best seats, they'll have to pay more. Yep. And uh, it's a democracy after all. And uh, you know, we we find a way to make it all work. It's a it takes a good team of people, a good board of directors that's willing to step up and mm -hmm. raise money and find sponsorships, along with our professional staff, and the wonderful support we have from the community through all of the restaurants, the mayor, the freeholders who own the building that we're in. What do you mean, hold on, the government owns that building? Yeah, the Middlesex County owns the uh, State Theater. Probably didn't know that. The government owns the building that the State Theater's in? Yes, and it's leased to the New Brunswick Cultural Center, which then s releases it to us. So it is truly a public-private, not-for-profit partnership? Exactly. We couldn't do it without the the, the the NBCC and the and the uh, Middlesex and County NBCC is the New, New Brunswick Cultural Center. For folks who don't know, 
Uh, we're, we, and I'm a Rutgers guy, Rutgers New Brunswick guy who come out, comes out of there, and, and that, that was a big part of my life for a lot of years. And when I was there in the 80s, trust me, it wasn't what it is today, you know? It didn't have the downtown that it has. But Johnson & Johnson, a big part of it. Rutgers, a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Talk about what New Brunswick, it didn't have the restaurants that it has. Uh -huh. uh, we, we had the trucks, you know, <laughs> where, you know, you can get, I'm not going to say good food, but food that'll fill you up. Um, but my, my point is this. For folks who don't know what New Brunswick is as a community, describe it. It's an emerging uh, small city in New Jersey that promises to be one of the most desirable places to go visit the arts, visit the downtown. The People's Choice Award uh, chose it the most desirable downtown art center last year. Uh, I think that what's the big turning point, of course, with, was when J&J &J decided to stay in New Brunswick and the IM Pay Tower was built and Pay said, this is where your cultural district should be, this is where the J&J &J facilities or headquarters are going to be, this is going to be retail, you should try to have a hotel here. The Hyatt was built, which J&J right. &J, uh, made happen, and uh, the same guy that made the, uh, the Hyatt happened, made, made the uh, State Theater happen. In 1988, uh, uh, Richard Sellers, the f former chair and CEO, decided, I'm going to put up my own money to save the State Theater and make it back into a cultural center. And uh, he put it out there for his own resources to make it happen. Eventually, the city ended up, or the, I'm sorry, the county ended up owning the building and uh, money was found to fix it up. And uh, we're always improving the facility. It's 90 years old, but it's a real gem as a building. You know it's that gorgeous. it's a gorgeous it's opera house. Gorgeous. How, how tough is it in the time we have left? The upkeep of the State Theater, not cheap. It's not cheap. It's, a, it's an expensive building to maintain. We're, we're working now on a master plan to upgrade it even further. Uh, we have fallow spaces that could be turned into other uh, uh, performing spaces. We're talking about adding a beautiful glass uh, of this arts room to the front of the building, orchestra pit lifts, new fly floors, uh, redo the auditorium, elevators. We have lots of plans. But, but so. again, as a few seconds we have left, constantly involved in fundraising, constantly. While you were in the arts, while you love the arts, you are running a business. We are, and we have to watch the bottom line. So we have been fortunate enough to balance our budget four years in a row now. I think 80 was the last year we had a small deficit before I came here. Uh, so we've been advantaged because we have a great staff and a great board, and we're watching the bottom line, and we don't run deficits. Check out the uh, State Theater in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, great stuff going on there. We're going there to see Tony Braxton. Good stuff, uh, Mark. Jonesy, wish you nothing but the best. And all the folks in New Brunswick, thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Thanks. It's exciting stuff. Thanks. It really is. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One has been provided by Meridian Health, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Cone Resnick, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.